Many horror franchises have attempted to make the leap from the big screen to the small screen, but unfortunately it tends to be the case that most can't stick the landing. Sometimes it was just not meant to be, some things can't transition from one medium to the other, and that's okay. Now and then you'll get something like a Hannibal that really lands with a wider audience, but as is often the way with horror, most franchises struggle to connect with the general public. Those that do often can't sustain it, for whatever reason viewership drops and this usually leads to the inevitable. I'm Cy for What Culture and these are 8 awesome horror movie TV shows nobody watched. Number 8, Friday the 13th for series. Debuting in 1987 and running for three seasons, Friday the 13th the series was originally titled The 13th Hour, but it had its name changed to draw in an audience that was familiar with the films. That being said, neither Jason Voorhees nor any of his victims ever make an appearance. The series contained nothing that tied it to the films and was more designed to play off the myth of unluckiness and tragedy that could befall on Friday the 13th. It followed two cousins who were trying to locate and save people from cursed artifacts, touching on the supernatural and the occult. The studio considered including Jason's mask at one stage, but it was decided it was best to let the show stand on its own. Whilst Friday the 13th the series sounds more like a precursor to Buffy more than a spin-off of the movie series, it did push the boundaries of acceptable gore on TV at the time. Cancellation came knocking for the show at the most surprising moment. Cast and crew were told the show was ending whilst they were on set filming the 20th episode of the third season, which would air as the show's last. So abrupt was the cancellation that the series got no real finale to bow out on. Number 7. Tremors the Tremors TV series really tried its best to spin off from the films, featuring returning characters and other familiar faces to widen the franchise after the release of Tremors 3, it had huge potential. Much like the movies, the show's special effects were cheap, but the Monster of the Week style actually suited it perfectly. Sometimes funny, intentionally or otherwise, and sometimes genuinely unnerving, the show was as good-natured and full of heart as the Tremors films that had inspired it. If anything, its format seemed like a stroke of genius. When the show debuted, it was actually sci-fi's biggest pilot in history, however viewership dwindled week to week. One thing that didn't help Tremors maintain its big audience was that, for whatever reason, the station decided to show the episodes out of order. Some editing was done to gloss over any inconsistencies in the story, but this only furthered watered down the show's potential. When the ratings dropped below what the channel had experienced with Farscape, which had been showing in the same time slot previously, Tremors was killed off after only half a season. It wasn't until the 2010 DVD release that fans could finally enjoy it as it was meant to be shown. Number 6. Scream one thing that the Scream series did so well was slow everything down and allow its story to breathe. A full two seasons with characters is a lot longer than your standard slasher flick, so it's much more time to get to know these people and feel more connected to them. On top of this, having protagonist Emma's mother directly linked to the history of a serial killer gave it a little more than just the teen drama feel from the films. Season 1 of the show was shaky at times and its references felt forced, but it's worth it to enjoy the follow-up which does some truly shocking things. The lore of the original season deepens, established characters die and there's even some very tasteful homages to the Scream lineage. Unfortunately, instead of building upon the success, the show's third season ditched its cast to do a massive reset. In doing so, the quality took a hefty nosedive. Rather than carry on the style that the show had established, it tried much harder to be the scream everyone remembered, and in doing so, it alienated an audience that had warmed to the standalone spin-off. Regardless, there's still plenty of fun and scares to be had in the first two seasons of Scream that have all the red herrings and brutality you'd hope from the franchise. Number 5. Castle Rock Castle Rock, Maine is the fictional town that a good number of Stephen King stories take place in or make reference to. Whilst King's work has had plenty of TV and film adaptations, the town itself finally got its chance to shine in 2018. Castle Rock as a show was somewhat of a dream come true for hardcore Stephen King fans as it was able to touch on so many of his works, be they adapted plots or clever winks and nods. Salem's Lot, The Shining, Shawshank Redemption, just to name a few, get their fair share of references. The casting was also superb, featuring several prolific actors who were no stranger to Stephen King's world, such as Bill Skarsgård, Sissy Spacek and Tim Robbins. The first season had its stumbles, but also its successes, with the episode The Queen in particular being talked about as one of the best episodes of TV in 2018. The show's second season found its footing after the rough start, with Lizzie Chaplin's portrayal of a pre-misery Annie Wilkes being a particular highlight. Likely unhappy with the lack of attention the show was receiving, however, Hulu put Castle Rock on the chopping block, smashed in its metaphorical ankles, and the show was stopped before it could really run. Number 4. Freddy's Nightmares 
If there was ever one slasher movie villain who deserved his own TV show, it's almost certainly got to be Freddy Krueger. Freddy's Nightmares is connected to the Elm Street film series in that each episode is generally set around the town of Springwood, with many taking place on Elm Street itself. Robert England returns to the role of Freddy for the entire run. Despite this, Freddy only plays a key role in the story of about 8 of the 44 episodes that were ever made. New Line Cinema knew that Freddy butchering a bunch of teenagers every week would get pretty redundant, and instead Freddy acts as more of a narrator who reacts to the anthology of tales. What makes Freddy's Nightmares stand out even more is its two-story format. Each episode is split into two different tales, and usually a minor character in the first story has a greater role in the second. It makes for a fun guessing game, and the show has become a bit of a treasure trove for largely unseen Kruger moments. Freddy's Nightmares might be one of the most overlooked pieces of Nightmare on Elm Street material. In all fairness, it's a little weird, but it's definitely got its own twisted charm. Number 3. Bates Motel Prequels are a tricky, tricky thing, and sometimes what makes horror in particular great is being given just enough details for our brains to fill out the rest. Did we really need to know the full story of Psycho's Norman Bates and his mother? Universal Television certainly thought so, as they didn't even bother with a pilot and approved a season of the show without a full proof of concept. Bates Motel stunned fairly early on with its tense, uncomfortable look at the tragically sheltered life of Norman and his overbearing mother Norma, both excellently portrayed by Freddie Highmore and Vera Farmiger respectively. It had its audience on tenterhooks looking for signs of Norman's descent as it blurred the line of the mother and son relationship. Bates Motel, unlike many shows on this list, actually made it to the end of its story and thankfully wasn't the victim of cancellation. For fans of the show, this was quite some relief. Later seasons of Bates Motel saw the show's audience plummet quite considerably from 3 million down to 1 million viewers, even though the story continued to be intriguing as it unfolded year to year. Those who fell away from the show would have sadly missed out on Norman's fall into true madness. The show's masterful final season should be cherished considering a lot of horror TV shows never make it that far. Number 2. Ash vs Evil Dead You can never keep a good deadite down, and the Evil Dead franchise has had a hell of a history since it debuted in 1981. Starting as a B-movie horror, the series twisted into a zany, time-travelling adventure with 92's Army of Darkness. This film would be the last real time we saw Bruce Campbell's Ash on our screens, until 2015's revival of the franchise with the series Ash vs Evil Dead. The show picks up decades after the last mainline film, with Ash being pulled out of his normal life to once more fight off the Horde of the Dead. It was awesome to see more of the character's home life, and the series allowed us to get closer to who the character was more than ever before. Alas, Ash vs Evil Dead fell victim to the sharpest blade when it comes to cutting shows out from the schedule. The show's third season saw a significant drop in viewership, with more than half of its audience abandoning the show. Thus, stars cancelled it. However, the show was so popular with hardcore Evil Dead fans that, even after its cancellation, they took to the internet to sign a petition asking for the show to be renewed. Bruce Campbell, now in his 60s, however declared that he was officially retired from the role of Ashley Williams. Number 1. The Exorcist the Exorcist stands tall today as one of the most tense and effective pieces of horror storytelling. With its success came sequels, but none came close to the majesty of the original. The recent TV series certainly worked hard to crawl out under the shadows of those unworthy sequels. Whilst taking plenty of nods from the film, The Exorcist show grew the concept outwards. Different Christian priests butt heads as they face down the possible demonic presence targeting a family. The Exorcist was slow, deliberate, and had some pretty stellar special effects, all things that felt right at home with the core identity of the franchise. Unfortunately, for all that it did right, The Exorcist surprised its audience by coming in as Fox's least watched show of 2017, which pretty much meant curtains immediately. Showrunner Jeremy Slater took to Twitter to take the heat off the situation and thanked Fox for renewing them for a second season, despite the fact they had always been dragging in the ratings. Sadly, this cancellation left so much unanswered about the show's story. Whilst it's easy to say that we could just enjoy the fact we finally got a worthwhile follow up to the 1973 movie, it would have been just that little bit. Bit nicer if its potential hadn't been excised by low viewership. 